Land Rover's Freelander 2 is the classiest compact 4x4 on the market. Class costs, of course, but with rivals you get what you don't pay for. Compromised off-road ability, lower residuals, and the lack of that feeling a Freelander gives you of being at the helm of a Range Rover designed for the real world. In second generation form, the Freelander really had to step up a gear, and it has. By the time the old model shuffled off the market at late in 2006, it had been overtaken in most meaningful ways by a whole host of Japanese rivals, and a really groundbreaking replacement was called for. Most agree that this car really moves the compact 4x4 market forward, especially for buyers who really care about off-road ability. But even if you don't, this car's well worth considering. Being higher up than in a normal car is great for driving, whether you're in a city centre traffic jam or out on the dales. Now I tend to prefer petrol to diesel power, and I certainly wasn't disappointed with the response of the 232 brake horsepower 3.2 litre i6 model. But I'm in a minority though, and most buyers in this sector will go for diesel, principally the 160 brake horsepower TD4 diesel that I'm driving here. And this particular version has Land Rover's intelligent automatic gearbox fitted. One of the most exciting parts about this model is Land Rover's decision to fit their excellent terrain response system and it's standard on all but the entry-level model. Now, this enables the driver to select the type of off-road conditions the car's experiencing via a rotary knob on the dashboard. And the electronics then work out how best to dole out the power and maximize traction, turning this Freelander 2 into a far more competent off-road vehicle. There's still no low-range transfer case, and that might scrub the Freelander 2 off the list of those who want something really rough and ready. But the car comes up with a number of other really clever ways to get you out of a tight spot. A full-time intelligent 4x4 system is based around a sophisticated Haldex centre differential, which keeps economy manageable on road, while an impressive gradient release control system is a logical extension of the old hill descent control system for descending steep and slippery slopes. Although the shape is familiar, you get a lot more Freelander for your money now. It's 50 millimetres longer, 109 millimetres wider and 32 millimetres taller. And the wheels have been moved out more to each corner, freeing up 105 millimetres more in the wheelbase. And that means you get a lot more rear seat accommodation. Weight has crept up by a whopping 250 kilograms in the process to a maximum now of 1,770 kilograms but a parallel improvement in safety, refinement and quality is a trade-off that I think most customers will be happy to accept. As I've suggested, class doesn't come cheaply. Prices are significantly above most rivals, although not as far above as you might expect. You'll probably pay no more than a couple of thousand more for this car than you would for an equivalent Toyota RAV4. Once you've got over the initial purchase price, Ongoing running costs are reasonably manageable thanks to extremely strong residuals. There's certainly no grumbles about fuel economy, the claimed 37.7 mpg figure of the TD4 being one of the class best, despite the hefty curb weight. On test, we've averaged just under 29 miles to the gallon, but that was with a notoriously lead-footed set of drivers, and the 68-litre fuel tank has given us a very respectable touring range. Emissions aren't quite as good as rivals like BMW's X3, Honda's CR-V and Toyota's RAV4, but there isn't a lot in it. The Freelander TD4's 194 grams per kilometre figure being very respectable for a go almost anywhere 4x4. Bigger, cleverer, better looking, made in England, this is one car we can all get behind and be proud of. There may be elements of France, America and Sweden in the car's makeup, but it could only ever have been produced using the expertise of homegrown talent. Just as it did in 1997, the Freelander has once again redefined what a compact 4x4 should be. Mm -hmm.